This is a quantum computer. Every inch of this rig lives at, or just above, absolute zero. The whole assembly is suspended on vibration damping supports. This is to cut mechanical noise, prevent heat leaks, and give physicists easy access. Gold plating on key components reflect stray light and heat to preserve the fragile superpositions at the heart of the quantum computation. Overall, the quantum computer looks like a chandelier, but it's incredibly powerful. Let's break this multi-layered stacked computer, layer by layer. Starting at the top of the computer, at the 4 Kelvin stage, at negative 269 degrees Celsius, this shelf is the warmest part of the fridge. Warm here is a relative term because you're nearing the absolute zero temperature at 4 degrees Kelvin. Here you'll find microwave sources, power splitters, and the first amplifiers that shape and boost the pulses destined for your qubits. These components generate some heat, so they're thermally decoupled from the colder stages below by attenuators and filters. Think of them as soundproofing for heat and noise. Every microwave line is tested to make sure it brings in clear, precisely timed signals without adding extra thermal photons to the machine. Next stop the intermediate floor between about 800 millikelvin and 100 millikelvin. These are coaxial cables. They're used to transmit microwave signals in low temperature environments, and they must be capable of operating at high frequencies in the range of several gigahertz to control qubits. Even tiny resistive losses in the coax walls will dissipate microwave energy as you send control and readout pulses down into the fridge that both weakens your signals at the qubit and forces you to crank up your power source, which in turn generates heat. At 800 millikelvin, coaxial cables swap their copper jackets for superconducting alloy jackets for this purpose. Component by component, each degree drop counts. By the time you hit 100 millikelvin, nearly a tenth of a degree above absolute zero, cryogenic isolators kick in. These one-way valves for microwave signals block any backflowing noise that could otherwise ride shotgun on your readout lines. It's like peeling away layers of an onion, each skin tuned to trap more heat until the core is so cold that thermal energy barely exists. But the real magic happens at the mixing chamber, deep down where temperatures plunge below 20 millikelvin. Here, a specifically prepared mixture of helium-3 and helium-4 isotopes separate into two phases. When helium-3 atoms cross the interface from the concentrated layer into the dilute one, they soak up heat. This heat of mixing is the refrigerator's actual cooling engine. The chamber's floor is covered in silver powder heat exchangers that pre-cool incoming helium streams and anchor wiring, so every stray photon, phonon, and stray electron finds its way to absolute chill. This is where you bolt on the quantum chip itself, because Chilling your qubits to under 20 millikelvin is non-negotiable for superconducting operation. Let's zoom in on that quantum floor. A tiny silicon or sapphire chip patterned with superconducting circuits that act as qubits. At these millikelvin temperatures, electrons in the superconducting loops flow without resistance, and the qubits can occupy superpositions of 0 and 1 long enough to perform computations. The chip sits inside a mu-metal cryoperm shield. A mu-metal cryoperm shield is basically a shell of super high permeability metal that wraps around sensitive parts of your quantum computer, like the quantum chip, to catch and reroute stray magnetic fields before they can disturb your qubits. Surrounding the chip, quantum amplifiers lie in wait, each one tuned to catch the faintest whisper of a qubit's microwave signal without disturbing it. In this hushed, ultra-cold microcosm, thermal vibrations and gas molecules are virtually frozen out, letting quantum algorithms unfold unmolested. Quantum computation starts with room temperature electronics that turn digital instructions into precisely shaped microwave pulses. Those pulses enter the fridge at 4 Kelvin, where attenuators, filters, and amplifiers control heat and preserve signal integrity. They travel down superconducting coaxial cables through the 800 millikelvin and 100 millikelvin stages, 
passing one-way isolators that block noise. In the mixing chamber, below 20 millikelvin, the pulses reach the superconducting chip itself, a silicon or sapphire wafer patterned with qubit loops and bolted to the chamber floor inside magnetic and vacuum shields. This is where the actual quantum gate operations occur with dynamic decoupling and other air mitigation techniques. Once the quantum operations finish, the qubit states are encoded back into microwave readout signals that ascend through quantum limited amplifiers and isolators, return to the four Kelvin stage, and finally reach room temperature electronics for down conversion, digitization, and classical output bits. Right now, as we speak, there are people dreaming of supercomputers who could instantly solve some of the biggest and baddest problems on the planet. And I'm not talking about AI, I'm talking about quantum computing. They say quantum computing is always five years away forever, but I think we're here. I think we are in the dawning days of quantum computing and quantum computers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and become a member of Rubicon.